Naval is one of our generation's most innovative and influential entrepreneurs. Naval founded AngelList, one of the most effective websites for startups, angel investors and job seekers looking to work or invest in startups. Naval also invested in over 200 companies including Twitter, Uber, Clubhouse, Stack Overflow and many, many more. One of the secrets behind his success is the way he thinks. I decided to copy and paste some of Naval's mental models into my head. A mental model is an explanation of how something works. It's like a concept, framework or a word view you carry around your head. Mental models help you understand life. If I install some of Naval's mental models into my head, I'd be able to 10x my success easily. I discovered Naval's mental models by reading his almanac. And the big promise of this little book is to guide you to wealth and happiness. And this book delivers on that promise. The book is not written by Naval himself. Still, it's a collection of transcripts from interviews, podcasts, and things he shared all across social media. The most important chapter in this book for myself was the chapter on mental models. If I think like Naval, I'll get valuable insights on growing my business and for sure that will help me build wealth in the long term. Installing Naval mental models in my head is like a cheat code. I mean, this guy is a genius. Imagine like having Naval in your head, helping you make decision, helping you take action on things is gonna be amazing. I'll give you an overview of all mental models before I start. I'll talk about mental model number one, choose to be yourself. Mental model number two, run uphill. Mental model number three, actions over results. And mental model number four, compound interest. And I'll start with the very first mental model I stole from Naval and I'll share how it affects my life. Mental model number one, choose to be yourself. When I started publishing content on the internet, I was terrified of what other people might think about my level of English. Then I was terrified to share some of my personal stories because I thought my friends would judge me. And when I started creating my content, the only thing I cared about was not getting hate comments. And I know it sounds ridiculous, but if somebody made fun of me, that would kill me and make me very, very miserable. I wasn't creating the content I wanted to create. I made content that won't get judged, but guess what? That content didn't get enough views as well. And every time I saw that I had a comment on my YouTube channel, I was frightened to death because I thought that it might be a hate comment. I felt like a YouTube people pleaser, but Naval says, be yourself, with passionate intensity. And he is right, there are so many copycats on the internet and so much AI generated content. What the internet needs the most right now is authenticity. He also says that nobody can beat you at being yourself. And for my YouTube channel, I make these types of talking head videos. I wanna make them look professional, but I cannot say that I consider myself professional in general. I don't wear suits, I don't wear ties. It was completely the opposite of my identity. In real life, I'm easygoing and I crack a lot of jokes. If I go to a place that requires a dress code, that would make me nervous. And until this day, I avoid places that require a very strong dress code. In real life, I'm casual, but I wanted to make my videos professional so they don't get any hate. And this was the problem. I was not myself. I tried to create some casual videos, vlog style videos, and I like how they turned out much better than my professional videos. And on top of that, it was much easier to make the casual videos. And this is just one example. Whenever I went on dates with girls in the past, I always thought, what should I do so this girl likes me? Sometimes I manage to pull it off, but if I start a long-term relationship with somebody, it would be much better if they fall in love with my true self, not some version I thought they might have liked. It's just a better way to start a long-term relationship. The next mental model I'm stealing from Naval is run uphill. Naval says, 
if you're evenly split on a difficult decision, take the path more painful in the short term. Naval also says that you should choose things with short term pain, but long term gain. And in my personal life, back in the days, I try to avoid pain as much as possible. And whenever I had to make a decision, I would choose the easiest, the less painful way out. And in many cases, that was wrong. And I'm going to give you an example from my dating life. Whenever I met a girl and we end up in a relationship, at the very beginning, things are very, very nice. I have the butterflies in my stomach, but sometimes I have this intuition feeling telling me that's not the right person for you. And I just see signs. I know that dating this person is fun, but we won't be happy together in the long term. The easy and less painful path would be to stay with that person and just lie to myself that we're gonna change and we're gonna make it work. But the way more painful is to break up and deal with all the emotions that come up with a breakup. I have to deal with my loneliness and being lonely is painful. If I break up, I compromise my happiness in the short term. But if I stay in the relationship, I'll be miserable with that person in the long term. That's why I chose to stay lonely, build myself as a person, build my value up, full soldier mode, and whenever the time comes, I'll meet the right person. And it's the same with my business. I graduated from law university. The moment I got my degree, I knew that was not the path for me and I wanted to do something else. Getting a job as a law intern or pursuing a career in law was in my comfort zone because I had the support of my friends and my family. And this is what everybody else did, you know. Instead, I decided to find out what I'm really passionate about. I tried different kinds of jobs and I found my passion for marketing. Quitting jobs was painful, but in the long term, I found the job I love and I want to do this job for the rest of my life. And I'm really happy with my choice to pursue a career in marketing. If I decided to pursue a career in law, I would have some peace of mind at the very early beginning, but I would hate it more later. And I can give you many examples. Most people run downhill, but the big reward is at the very top. And to reach it, I know that they need to be running uphill. If that makes sense, I think it does. The next mental model I copy pasted from Naval is impatience with actions and patience with results. I'm a millennial and I expect things to happen fast. Whenever I go online, I can order pizza right away. Whenever I watch a movie, the underdog becomes a champion very quickly. When I scroll social media, I see everybody losing 100 pounds in 21 days and I see people on social media making their first million within three months of just starting out. And all this poisonous media and the comfort of the modern world gave me the wrong expectation of how long it takes to get real results. And if you run uphill, it's tough to get any results daily. For example, I got seven subscribers from a YouTube channel for one week. It's not a lot, it's some progress, but if I see my results since I started, I got 400 subscribers in one and a half years. Again, that's not a lot, but it's something. If I focus only on the results, I'll quit after making two videos. But I know that if I keep on making videos, eventually I'll make it. I don't say that I'm 100% sure I'll make it, but I'll do whatever it takes to make it. I'll be patient with the actions I need to take to make it. And if I'm consistent enough, my actions will compound over time and I'll earn some compound interest. And this is another mental model I stole from the vow. Compound interests relates not only to the money I make, but also to every little action I take. Every small action I take will compound over time. I know that many videos talk about compound interest in finance and stock investing, but also my actions compound over time. And let me give you another example. If I smoke one cigarette right now as a non-smoker, probably it won't harm me. But if I smoke cigarettes every day for 20 years, all those cigarettes compound, 
which will have a nasty effect on my health. No matter what action I take, it will gain compound interest. The bad things will become very, very bad and the good things will become even better. So this is how I apply the compound interest model in my life. And it's not just a financial term. It applies to my personal life as well. That's why I'm very careful about how I do things and what I do. No matter what I think or what I do, I often ask myself how this idea or how this little action will compound over time. People think that actions only compound in a positive way, but I have to remind you that they also compound in a negative way. So be very careful with the compound interest. This was the video for today. Make sure you subscribe to my channel. My name is Nico. In this channel, I talk about business, wealth and marketing. And yeah, I'll talk to you soon. And sorry for my voice. It's a little bit itchy or scratchy or whatever you want to call it. But I really had to make this video.